He's from Australia. He's a writer. He's an author. He's a humorist. His website is 27B-6. Please welcome David Thorne. I'm sorry while I do this. Um, <laughs> I'm cold. For anybody that's not familiar with your work, and we're going to talk about it in depth, tell us a little bit about it. Uh, well, I have a website where I post uh, articles as well as emails that people write me back and forth. One of my favorite emails, and this is probably your most popular one, is you tried to pay an overdue, uh, an overdue bill, and it was an email exchange back and forth. You tried to pay the bill with the drawing of a spider. That's right, because I didn't have any money. Yes, so it was a seven-legged <laughs> spider. And it was a back and forth exchange, and how, how, did it, how did it go for people that haven't seen well, it? Well, she, she didn't want to take the picture of the spider as payment. <laughs> yes. So, um, so I asked for it back, and she <laughs> sent it back. Yes. And um, it went on from there, and um, eventually we came to a um, agreement that I would actually pay money. Yeah, yeah. But your work has been that that email. I mean, everyone was talking about Letterman, Conan. I mean, it was all over the world. Um, yeah, did you have any expectations when you emailed about a spider uh, to pay for a spider that it would get that much attention? No, not really. I was I was I was actually just wanting to waste their time because. <laughs> There you go. It was actually, uh, uh, at the time, a lot of people said it was to pay for an electricity account or something like that. It was actually for a um, chiropractor bill. That's what it was for. Okay. And uh, I'd actually gone in there, sat, sat in there for about two hours waiting. They poked me a couple of times and I, I'd left and they charged me $233. So I figured if they're going to waste my time, I'll waste theirs. And you did. And it was very entertaining. Um, let's talk about party in apartment three, which was an, another worldwide sensation. Uh, tell us about that. Um, as, as same lines, uh, I received an invite in my uh, letterbox. Well, it actually wasn't an invite, it was a letter. Somebody was all colourful with balloons and they were saying they're going to have a party. Mm -hmm. um, well, actually, when I, when I first, first opened it up, because of all the balloons and it's, I'm having a party, I thought, oh, yeah. I'm invited to a party. <laughs> I thought that was nice. And I said, if, if the noise is too loud, just let us know. It was not. Mm -hmm. It was not an invite. So, I, so I invited myself and uh, emailed him because I had his email address on there and said, um, "What time would you like me to turn up?" And that progressed into oh god, ninja suits and jumping across balconies and all sorts of things. Uh, that was actually good fun. That one, and it was especially good fun because I had to see him on the steps as we were going Fine. in and out of the apartment for about two years after that. Um, you, I mean, you, you have these public feuds, like your, your neighbor that was shining light into your apartment. Uh, that's the most recent one. Tell, yes. us, tell us about that. Well, he's, he, he put up this spotlight. We, we live in a gated community. It's, in, it's in, the, in the forest, but it's a gated community, so there's no, there's no lions or anything there. That's good. Um, he put up a spotlight, <laughs> the most intense spotlight you've ever seen. Okay. It actually lit up our bedroom, so I, so I took the spotlight out and put it in his letterbox and left him a note saying that I'd left it in the letterbox. <laughs> and he put it back in. He emailed me saying, don't, don't come on, yeah. I said the F word, don't, don't come on my property again. So it was a back and forth. Yeah, yeah, and you have a book. And, and eventually, yeah. eventually he conceded and put in a, a smaller globe, but you that was not after, not after a little bit of carrying on. Um, no, I don't always win, I only post the ones that I win. Smart man. <laughs> But you get a tip. We should get a you were really excited for the tip jar. I asked you, should uh, we do a tip jar? And you said yes. Yeah, I said that was the best idea I've heard or not. Yes, thank you. It was, Apart um, from when somebody said, let's get beer in the green room. That's true. Um, your book, New York Times bestseller, The Internet is a Playground, Irreverent um, Correspondence of an Online Genius. How's the book going? It's going all right. That's good. OK. <laughs> Next, we're going to, I want to talk, um, do you see yourself as, as a, uh, is a confrontational person, a troublemaker? What would you categorize no, yourself? Not really. I would, I would say um, if somebody's being stupid, then I can, I can be just as stupid. OK. Yeah. I want to say, you turn down almost, this is for real, almost any public appearance. TV, you turn everything down. Um, this, this is such a rare appearance for you. Um, so I wanted to kind of read this email that's on your blog about why you're doing this tonight. No, I'll do this. Um, where is it? It's here somewhere. Oh, here it is. This is actually on your blog. Um, 
Okay, first of all, you're talking about the panel. Sitting in a chair in the new media live keynote with Jenny Lawson and Chad Vader. The keynote is apparently hosted by the guy who played McLovin in the movie Superbad. So at least they have one big name. Um, <laughs> After agreeing to do the book signing for Lulu and not knowing the Blog World event was being held in the same place, I was contacted by Dave from Blog World who asked if I would be available, to which I replied, I would love to, but unfortunately I will be in New York City for a book signing thing at BEA on those dates. And he responded, great, we're in the same venue, I've chatted with Lulu and they're happy for you to do the keynote, which was kind of annoying. I have never spoken to an audience before, but I figure winging it is probably the best approach, so I'm not preparing anything. If you plan on attending, I would recommend bringing a book or something. That was on your blog. <laughs> so, so why are you here? This is so um, amazing that you're, you're here. You I don't do know. Usually, usually I manage to get out of most things. But, yes. Um, uh. Were you kind of shocked when, the, when, you, when you exploded kind of in popularity? With, uh -huh. like your website shut down a bunch of different times. Yeah. And that was pretty that, ridiculous. The, um, before, before I posted the, um, the spider email, I was getting probably 20, 20 people a week. And half of them were friends, so just being <laughs> polite. Sure, we can't relate to and, that. Um, yeah, no, it was getting uh, like half a million hits a day. Wow. And, um, yeah, and I wasn't prepared for that. I was on a, um, I, was, I think I was paying $6.99 a month for, <laughs> for, my, <laughs> for my hosting plan. Yeah, because I, I don't know about the blogging and everything like that. I just made the HTML and uploaded it as that. So it seems like it was kind of all an accident. You are just kind of amusing yourself and your friends. Yeah. And it was kind of an accident. Yeah. I don't know. It was, it was interesting. And you're, you, were, you were a designer, you're still a designer, correct? I still am. Still, oh, okay. Yeah, because I was published by Penguin and they don't pay you jack shit in royalties. Good to know. <laughs> Do any fans of yours try to engage you in email correspondence, kind of like what yeah, you Yeah, I never, um, yeah, I, uh, I mean, earlier on I never got that, but um, more recently, but once, once the website um, gains some popularity, the, um, yeah, I get that a lot. But I, I can, usually you can see through through them, they're, they're, like, they've purposely badly written it and they're better, oh, I hate your website, you gay faggot, you know, that sort of thing. So, <laughs> yeah. It's fun stuff, you should frame that one. Um, you've kind of created trouble with the emails, has anyone ever threatened to sue you? Uh, no, uh, yeah, no, I've been sued a few times. I spent... Um, <laughs> what, what was your favorite person that sued you? What was the circumstance? Well, my favorite... <laughs> my favorite being sued, if I, that's not even a real term, is it? Um, I don't know. Uh, uh, my... Um, McDonald's. Tell us about it. Um, well, I posted, uh, I was, uh, every single time I went through the drive through and my order's not that complicated. I just have three Big Macs, no meat. All right? I'll just simple, the vegetarian version. All right? <laughs> okay. Every time there'd either be meat or something missing from the thing when I got home. So, so I just grabbed a few things online, made a, made a McDonald's header and wrote a little message, an internal memo, saying <laughs> for every five people that leave something out, because that way we'll make X amount of money. And, um, <laughs> and they didn't but, like that, I wonder why. But it was signed Robert Chubabi, right? Which was a little, <laughs> bit, a little bit close enough that I thought, maybe think. But no, it, it went, um, went semi-viral. And um, yeah, McDonald's had to change their front page to say, this is fake and everything like that. And, <laughs> But, yeah, but no sense of humour because right, I'm having a laugh about it at home yeah. uh, and uh, oh, oh look McDonald's have got another thing, knock on the door, police came in, took all my computer equipment. You're was, so kidding me. Uh, all my computer equipment and um, I was, because it was a Friday night I had to spend the entire weekend in jail as well. <laughs> And when I told when I told the police that I was a vegetarian, because Australian police have a little bit of a sense of humour, even even though they're <laughs> when I told them that I was a vegetarian, they gave me a raw potato to eat for the three days. Oh no, mm. that's craziness. Yeah. But that's my yeah, that's my favourite suit. Did McDonald's ever apologise? No. And when I went to court, they dropped it. I was expecting Ronald McDonald to show up, but it was, <laughs> but it was that been fun. yeah, it was just some old that guy. <laughs> Oh, Let's see how much we have so far. Thanks, mate. One, two, three. We have four bucks in, uh, singles, and then we have a lot of change. This is good. This is Keep good it so coming. <laughs> good tip. Um, we're going to bring out our, our, our next guest. Um, you finished with me? No, no, no. We're just going to bring out our next guest, and then we're all going to talk. Um, she's gonna, I'm going to talk to her. She's going to play some music, and then we're uh, going to have like a panel discussion. The audience will ask me. You didn't ask me about my new book. 
Tell us about your new book. Well, it's called, <laughs> it's called Let's Pretend This Never Happened, a mostly true That's memoir. Awesome. It's awesome. It's, got, it's, got, it's got a picture of a fucking rat or something on the cover. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just full of me going on and on and on about stuff. Okay, tell, is that it? Yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. 